Behind me is six out of 14 TVs that we are going to make a video wall with. Let's take a look at how we do it. All right, middle of the night, wiring up a video wall here made out of uh, total 14 75 inch TVs. Currently I have six of them mounted and uh, just wiring up, gonna do a little test before we get the rest of them. They're gonna be shaped in what is like a U or a V almost. Um, super cool backdrop for a DJ for a nightclub. We are redoing the entire inside of one of our nightclubs. Got a video wall controller here. This guy can do nine outputs. I'm gonna use him for six. I'm gonna do a total of three different processors. One for the six on the back, one uh, for four outputs on that side, and another four outputs on that side. So a total of three processors, 14 TVs, all coming from one computer to run all the video walls. We will run it through a Blackmagic video hub just so we can throw different content on different ones. This middle video wall is gonna be set up as an ultra wide and the other two are standard 16 by nine aspect ratio, so. See, most people just come in after it works. They don't actually get to do the fun part of troubleshooting 10,000 ways that didn't work. They just come in the party and drink your faces up. So this is what it looks like behind the scenes. We, because uh, all the TVs are vertical. Uh, but the splicer can't actually vertically align them. This specific one, you can get a different one that can. So this is a video wall controller. It's splicing one into six outputs. This is what each TV is actually getting. And I'm sending from Mad Mapper to the splicer. Splices out looks like this to all TVs. So um, with a different controller, this might be a little simpler for you. Uh, but for me, with what we had, this is how we're gonna do it. up and running today so next time you see this we should have a fully functioning video wall with 14 TVs everything spliced together working well so uh, let's get to it there's our video wall so behind me 14 TVs all working uh, it's actually set up as three separate displays so that's what you're seeing now but of course we're gonna link them all together and make them do one giant image so we can have text scrolling across, we can have images, we can do uh, different groupings of different TVs. So we have a little more of Tech World set up now. Uh, we've decided this is how it's gonna be set. Lighting is going to be here. You have a 43 inch uh, TV in front of you, uh, which will most likely have a specific camera view, the front shot of the stage. Over here, I will put another monitor that's gonna have a multi-view on it. That way we can see the other cameras and sources we have feeding into the video hub. Um, and so this is where the main tech will sit and kind of run the show. Uh, we're gonna put video over here. So two separate laptops, lighting and video. We thought about getting a Mac Studio to run everything. Ended up going a different direction, uh, especially because of stock and quantity. So. This is gonna run video, this is gonna run lighting. Uh, I am going to have this do one video output that you can route to the TVs, that way this one controller can control absolutely everything. Um, but then we could also switch and do bigger, cooler things by splitting the workload up between two machines. Um, over here we have three monitors. These three monitors show exactly what the three sets of video walls show. So we have three different displays really running our video wall and those are the three different displays that way while we're up here behind all the tvs we can see what we're routing what's going where um, it'll help for troubleshooting and, and whatnot so from here i can control all the lights i have a great angle and i'll have multiple angles um, i'll be able to see even like 
just the VIP section, top down of the DJ, things like that. So that's gonna be really cool here. And I can route whatever I want to this monitor um, through, again, the 40 by 40 video hub. Uh, I'll probably get a stream deck with companion just to make that even easier. So we can just pick what you want full screen. I can even route a multi-view to this if I want to, um, but that's not set up yet. However, now we're just going to make uh, one giant image across all 14 TVs. We need three outputs out of this one laptop. Uh, and uh, let's wire that up and see what that looks like. So we have a bunch of these guys, the MDHXs. These are like the $300 converters. We have a bunch of these guys. These are the MDLXs. Um, the reason we have so many left over is because the old ballroom, before we just started this rebuild, uh, every single display, TV, input device, source, uh, splicer had an individual one of these for every single in and out. Um, we are doing things a lot more efficiently now where I don't need one for each one of these six TVs because they're all acting as one display uh, through a video wall controller. All right, so I now have three outputs out of this one computer. It defaulted to making them all mirrored, so I'm gonna unmirror the displays. So now I'm gonna gather all the windows. I'm gonna make sure I set so right now you can see those are all my displays. It thinks one of them should be really small. Um, so I'm gonna change that. But I'm gonna find this one here. Make sure that becomes my main display. I'm gonna restart the settings so I can actually get them all back onto one screen. So now I'm going to move some of these windows around. I want everything to be on to my right side. It's just a standardization that I do. Uh, I always have my main display all the way on the left. So this is how I'm setting it up. I'm gonna go to one of these displays, make sure they're all set to 1080p. Okay, so now you can see I have my, my one display here. I have three other displays. Now let's go to Mad Mapper and route signal to all of those displays. And we're gonna set it up. Pull up Mad Mapper here. Uh, I'll do a brand new video file. So I'm gonna set one of these projectors to Decimator 1. Add another projector, decimator two, and add a third projector, decimator three. I'll set all these guys up just like this. So there's my three projectors. And finally, I'm going to send something different to each of them so I know which one's with. I'm gonna send that one there. Over here, I will send something else. And then finally, I'll send something that looks like this. Okay, so these are gonna be my three separate images. Uh, if we look down here, I'll actually be able to route them. Up. Oh, I need to do one more thing, which is hit full screen over here. And now we can see it shows up down there. So let's go ahead and just route these guys. Uh, route that to destination 10, cool. Source. To take that, uh, destination three, oh, actually. And I would do all this normally on the Video Hub software, but for speed, I'm just doing it this way. Uh, 12, source, four, take. All right, so if we look over here on our displays, we can see each display has a different signal. We have different signals up here. So all I'm gonna do is just make sure the layout on the TVs matches the layout in my software. We can see in my software, we're a little bit off. Um, so I'm gonna reorient the projectors to match what's happening up on screen. So this guy just needs to come all the way over here. And then we'll be good. All right, so exactly what I have up on my three TVs is what's happening right here. So now it becomes very easy. We're pretty much fully set up. So now it's just about dropping content that we want. For instance, I want this one image that's going across all three. I can get rid of these other quads here and I can just stretch this across all three TVs 
and I should have a line going across all my TVs now. It's really, it's that easy once you have all this understood. Um, you can see on my displays over there, my line's moving, and now I just stretch content. So I can do a line pattern, uh, I can layer a couple things, so let's go ahead and make something cool. I'm gonna do this gradient, we'll change a couple colors here, and I'll do a red for A to Z. Right, and that'll be our color scheme, and then we'll add a new layer, stretch it across all of them. I want this one to be text. We're gonna write A to Z, oops, productions, right? We're gonna make sure that fills our screen here. Scale to fit. I'm gonna size down a hair. And we're gonna scroll that text across at a pretty fast pace there. Okay, so we have another layer. I'm gonna click add so we can see what's on underneath it. So now we have A to Z productions and let's just add a couple other cool things here. Let's add another layer. Let's do a waveform. That looks pretty cool. Again, make sure we can run all of them at the same time. Check, check. Yep, yep. Hey, hey. So that looks pretty good there. Uh, I'll do one more just for fun. Another waveform, just like this. And hit add. So now we have four different layers overlapping from one single computer to three TVs, which ends up multiplying out to 14 75 inch TVs, all vertical. That's how we wire it. From here, three outputs to the video hub. The video hub routes out to the video wall splicers. Then from the video wall splicers to the TVs. How do you do a video wall? We have our lighting wired, we have all of our video wall wired, uh, we even have our sound that is hanging wired. Next step is to bring in our stage decks, our ground stack sound, finish the lighting in the back of the room, and get all the floor plan and furniture up and ready, and we're gonna be open here in a little less than a week. We're excited, things move really fast over here, and uh, we're excited to throw parties again, get everyone back in here and see what they think, so. That's, uh, this is Ballroom 2.0. Uh, you've seen on our YouTube channel the original Ballroom when we built that out. Uh, and this one's gonna be even bigger and better. Stay tuned for more. Let us know if you have any questions. And keep watching. Thanks.